I think we should do somewhere else. If you're going to talk behind this, I should be somewhere else. There's only one way. Trout shout. Hey boys and girls, high schoolers, junior hires, this is Tony with your weekend trout shout. Just a reminder, you got your snacks in the fridge, uh, you got Pop-Tarts, bagels, um, there's juice boxes, there's a coffee machine back there. Help yourself, try and limit yourself to just one, because if you notice in the courtyard, there is also some hot dogs and some popcorn and some other sodas because of uh, football. Yay, football. Um, there's also some games back there, so afterwards, go out, play some games, meet some older people, have a good time. Also, um, not really many announcements, but make sure you text yada 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 to yada yada yada, and you'll get some new uh, announcements about any upcoming events with Alive Youth. That's going to be it for the Trout Shout. One joke for you. Did you hear about the movie with the hot dog? It was an Oscar wiener. Peace! Trout shout! So let's start with something really simple. Let's start with a little science information. There's this part of our brain that I think is so cool and so unique because it's just the way that we're wired and it's really cool. And it's, it's located right in the middle of our brain. It's called the anterior cingulate. Now the way that the anterior cingulate works is it helps us when we're experiencing compassion and when it helps us when we're experience empathy and grace and kindness towards people. And see, the stronger that that part of our brain is, the more that we experience those things. And what's really cool is that those things are linked to God. When we think about God, we think about how compassionate he is, how empathetic he is, how caring and how grace and how kind and how just he is. And so these are the characteristics of God. And this is part of our brain that helps us to understand God in a deeper way. And the two are so linked together. And the crazy thing is that scientists have recently been studying this part of our brain. They've been studying the anterior cingulate to see what do we, how can we as human beings strengthen that part of our brain. And you know what's interesting? The number one way that they found to strengthen that part, to build that up, to make it stronger, is by through prayer. The scientists studies say that 10 minutes a day in prayer will help strengthen that part of our brain. And what's baffling, I mean not baffling, because it's not baffling, it's kind of cool, is that God created us. He made our brains, he put them together the way that they're supposed to be put together, and then he continues to tell us to pray. Because what he's telling us to do is strengthen this part of our body. Strengthen this part that helps us to understand compassion. Strengthen this part that helps us to understand grace and mercy and, and empathy. Strengthen this. Pray, 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 pray. And God tells us to pray, 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 pray. And so I think it's baffling to me, and it's cool that God created us that way, and, but sometimes it's, it's hard. Because like that's, the scientists say 10 minutes a day. 10 minutes a day in prayer is what helps affect that. And sometimes I'm thinking like 30 seconds is all I've got before I start falling asleep. And I know that, that 10 minutes a day in prayer is really hard. But we, we don't need to start there. That's what scientists say is the best thing. And, and I'm sure even more than that is good for us, our health and our, and our, our well-being and our relationship with God. And what we're talking about really is just a, as a process of getting to know God better and building a relationship with him. Sweet. Well, I have David here today, and we are we talked started to talking about prayer last week, and we're going to kind of continue that on this week. Um, and so I asked you to do some stuff before we we got together, so this isn't just some random weird scripted thing. Um, but we we started talking last week in the high school service about the Lord's Prayer. We kind of did it in the middle school at some of them, but not at all of them. Um, but we we really looked at it as as a framework. And so that's kind of what I wanted to, to talk to you. So I, I guess my question is, have you ever read the Lord's Prayer before? Yeah. 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 So talk, I mean, I guess talk a little bit about, about that, because I mean, that's, I think, think it's one of those things that a lot of people are very familiar with. Yeah. Yeah, I had to memorize it as a kid, mm -hmm. I guess, or probably middle school or elementary school. Yeah. But um, 
yeah, I've read it since then, and it's, it's a it's a good framework for how to structure my prayer. Yeah. Time. Thinking about a high schooler or middle schooler just getting into prayer, if they're if they're looking for the Bible and looking for answers and looking for like, well, okay, how do I do this? Because I think that's one of the biggest like when we come up to prayer, like I don't know how to start, I don't know what to say, like, yeah. and then we see this. Do you, what do you what do you think that a high schooler should, or middle schooler should take away from the Lord's Prayer? Um, like just getting started, I think it's important to when you start praying to focus it on God and and who He is. And if you don't know much about um, God or the Bible, the best place to start is the Bible. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need, and forgive us our sins, as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. I, I kind of think of it, an easy way to rem remember is pray. Um, P-R-A-Y. Um, praise. So that's what I was kind of just talking about, um, praising God, keeping his, his name in mind, and talking to him about um, how great he is, because that reaffirms in, in you um, <clears throat> that he's going to follow through, he's going to answer your prayers. Um, R is repent, so repent of your sin, and that kind of comes later in that um, prayer, um, and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sinned against us. So it's kind of twofold. Um, God, please forgive me for my sins. He already knows your sins, so you might as well tell him. Um, and um, also forgiving others. A, ask. Um, ask God for, for needs for yourself and needs for others. Um, and then why. I, at the end of the prayer, it's helpful to um, just pray to God and ask, um, just yield yourself to His Lordship. And if you don't really know what that means, you can read a lot in like the first four books of the New Testament. It talks about a lot about that. Because um, even the finish of this, verse 13, and don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. And I think Jesus is pointing out to us that um, we need his help, and we need to submit our lives to him. So that's kind of how I like to end. Yeah. Okay. So we break. So the breaking down would be just to sum up would be P for praise, praise, praise God for who He is. A for or R, R. for <laughs> R for repent. repent. Yeah. Okay, and that's for asking for forgiveness. Yeah, and then, forgiveness of wrongdoings. Okay. A for ask, ask, ask what we need. Yeah. And then yield, saying, yeah. hey God, you're in control. You've got this. Right. I, my life is yours. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Cool. Um, what, do you have any tips for people who are, like, because sometimes, I mean, praying is not the easiest thing to do. Like, it, especially, I think, for, for younger people or people who are just starting out in their prayer life. Like, we talked a little bit about that last week, but just that it's not easy just to jump into it. So how would you suggest just getting started? Um, I would say make a prayer time. At, for me, when I was younger, um, I was it was easy for me to pray at night. So maybe like before you go to bed, or after school, or in the morning if you're a morning person. Um, set up a time where maybe for like ten minutes, you or five minutes or something, mm -hmm. you sit there and kind of go through this and read a, read a little section of the Bible um, and and maybe meditate on that and praise God for what you've learned, what you've seen of his character in that mm -hmm. and then go through and repent of your sins, ask him for your needs and, and at the end of the prayer just say, God, I, I yield my life to you and it's yours. Okay. You know? yeah. And that's like a good place to, to start, like doing that every day is, is going to really help and uh, help you get through some tough tough years in, in life in middle school and high school. Um, <clears throat> but don't overcomplicate it. Yeah. Like, 
if if uh, you don't have time to really go through those steps, like just pray to God and just talk. You know, mm -hmm. It's conversation. Yeah. Like it doesn't need to be so structured, but yeah. the structure helps sometimes. Well, even just taking like one of those letters just to start. Yeah. Maybe it's just like you're going to start with praising who he is. Yeah. Or I'm just going to start with, I'm going to repent. I know I've got some things that I've done and made some mistakes I've made, and I'm just going to start laying those before God. Yeah. Okay. And if it's already natural, don't doubt it. Like yeah. just keep going. You know? Yeah. That's cool. Um, something that someone said to me recently, or that heard somewhere, was the idea of like building a playlist around your prayer life. It's so like even just starting with like one song, you're like, all right, I'm just gonna pray during this song. Yeah. And then just start naturally like adding songs to it. And there's so many different songs out there that you can easily listen to or pray to, like Spotify, iTunes, however it is. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because that just kind of helps build the structure of time too. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Cool. Well, thank you for joining us today, David. Yeah. Um, we're gonna go play with his daughter, who's like six yeah. weeks old, so. Yeah. How old is she now? She's uh, three, three weeks. weeks and not six weeks. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thanks. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs>